Gemini, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for July 2018 and man Gemini, it is a busy Cosmo month and we've got a lot of changing of directions happening. So that's very much so something you're going to be experiencing this month. Thank goodness you are a double sign and you are an air sign. So you're able to kind of change directions pretty well and also your immutable energy as well. So that is very good for you. However, with all of the changing of directions, we've also got your ruling planet Mercury taking a retrograde this month as well. So this will kind of shift you from having your full capacity and your full um, blessing to give to things just like it does to your ruling planet. But that's not the worst news ever. We always use these retrogrades for good things around Stormy Grace, right? We want to use them to relook at, re-edit, reconsider the things that Mercury's energy is pointing us to. As well, all month long, we've got Mars in a retrograde. We've got Chiron going retrograde in Aries at the beginning of the month. We've got a Mercury going retrograde, Jupiter coming direct, and we've also got a set of eclipses on our hands. So this is just a lot of movable energy happening this month. So let's talk a little bit about that, and then I'll break it down by date. So first and foremost, let me just tell you what, we have got Jupiter coming direct pretty much in the beginning first week of this month around the 10th. So that's when this is going to happen. And I am telling you what, Gemini, I feel like if you've had any holdbacks with work, co-workers, your health, anything like that, it's almost like Jupiter now coming direct because he's our biggest benefic planet comes and he just opens these floodgates. So work opportunities, projects. It's almost as if there's so much work or things to do available to you now that it's almost overwhelming, right? Now, where is this really great is that as we continue on, we see that there's also going to be a solar eclipse and it's like the random solar eclipse of the year happening in Cancer. And this hits in your second house of income right so this is phenomenal now you've got all of these opportunities for work or things to come your way or opportunities to come your way right and it's changing your financial situation which is probably something many of you have been working on i know for the last couple months as i've been talking to you i've been talking to you a lot gemini about your head where's your head did you hurt your head did you hit your head what's going on inside of your head and it's almost like the everything mentally in the mental game kind of gets on track and you get to see your revenue begin to um, increase or improve at the solar eclipse because the solar eclipse is when we're, gonna, when we're gonna plant those seeds of intention for new things to play out over the next six months. So remember, right here on the 12th, you may not be like, yeah, I'm rich, okay? Like that may not be it. You may gradually see your income stream come up and up and up, which is a phenomenal opportunity. Now, the other thing that the second house is really impactful for is your esteem. And I feel like your esteem has been changing so much, Gemini, you guys have really gone through some big um, shifts over this last little bit of time, definitely over the last six months since the beginning of the year. And so this for me is like an esteem boost and builder for you. You're finding your way again. You're maybe even partnering with someone who is helping you find your way again or something like that. But finding the way, finding the esteem, finding the value in what you do, for some of you, you may even be raising prices. This is definitely a beautiful energy for you to work with. Now. As we continue on through the month, we're going to see it towards the end of this month, your ruling planet go retrograde here on the 26th. And it's happening in a messaging sector, in a very mental place for you, right? So this is downstairs in the third house. So this is really important, not only because this is the natural house of you and of Mercury, but because in your messaging sector, what it gives me the idea is that you could have miscommunications left and right. If you're with a partner or you have someone in your life or a business partner or something like that, you may have all of these opportunities coming your way this month or you may have things coming your way and it looks like the world is really getting good for you and somebody outside of you is kind of feeling like left out and you're trying to communicate your needs to them or you're trying to communicate what you need and what you're getting back is kind of some, some feedback that's not really very comfortable. Now, anything having to do with writing, um, signing contracts, any of those kinds of things, I would definitely caution you to hold out. You may wanna be big, brave, and bold and push forward with something, but I would tell you if you can, um, hold out. There's a lot of misunderstanding that's happening during a Mercury retrograde. And remember, when you're not, when your ruling planet is retrograde, even if it's halfway across the zodiac, it means that it pulls a little bit of your forward energy back as well. So take the hold back. 
see what you can redo, re-edit, rethink how maybe you can re-communicate with some energies. You've got a lot of stuff happening in your fourth house this month. Maybe it's a different conversation at home or something like that. Now on the 27th of the month, right after Mercury takes its retrograde, we're going to have this lunar eclipse. And the lunar eclipse, this Along with the Mars retrograde at the top of your chart, it's in the ninth house. Something that it makes me think of is that maybe you decide now is not the time for you to do a certification or um, something in higher education or maybe some goal or licensing or something that you've been working toward or you've been thinking you want to go towards. Or maybe you go to take the test, Gemini, and I'm sorry to say it, but maybe you fail it or you don't pass. Something like that could definitely be coming up. But the other thing that it gives me this big, bright indication of is that maybe... Your life has shifted so much over the last six months that you're rethinking your full plan, right? You're like, wait a minute, I don't, I don't have all of the answers here and I'm not even exactly sure what I want to do next. It's very much so in the ninth house, a place of faith. Right? At some point, you're willing to take your hands off the steering wheel and say, wait a minute, I need to reevaluate, and something's going to show me the next direction to go. So I think like, that this is just a really wonderful time for you with this retrograde energy to question a lot of things. Question as much as you can this month, okay? All right, so let me break this month down for you by date. At the beginning of the month, on the 5th, we've got Chiron, who's right now transiting through Aries, taking a retrograde. This is going to be happening in your 11th house. Now, when Chiron is in Aries, when it's transiting through Aries, we are fighting for our identity. So for you, this could be long-range plans, goals, your ambitions, your dreams. What do you want for your life, right? You could be fighting for a new identity here. And with Chiron retrograde, you're getting an opportunity to step back and say, now, wait a minute, what piece of me is maybe not fitting? Or where's the equilibrium off here? Or where am I not actually putting in the right kind of fight, the right kind of movement, the right kind of action to be useful to me achieving that? The other thing that it makes me feel like is maybe in your social groups, if you've been a part of social groups for a while or clubs, memberships, groups, or even in your friendships groups, you may be feeling like, do I fit here anymore? And it is okay to find out maybe that you don't fit in, that you've got to realign with a different kind of energy in order to be helpful to your cause moving forward. Now on the ninth, we've got Venus, who's our small benefic planet, moving into Virgo, and this lights up the fourth house zone for you. So you could be beautifying your home, right? Things at home could find like they have a little bit more harmony to them, right? Ju uh, um, Venus and Jupiter together want to bring a benefit. Jupiter comes direct on the tenth, so now we have both of our benefic planets direct forward motion looking to give you some blessings. So one of the other things I keep thinking in this fourth house zone as well is that... Um, Maybe you find a little bit of peace, but it could also just get very busy with that Jupiter turning direct. You could be working a lot more. You could have something like that going on. And while the income that may come to that from that may benefit your fourth house, your home zone or your property or a move or something that you're doing, it could also create just a little bit of attention because Venus and Jupiter together, while they are just such a divine energy, they can be a little bit indulgent and exaggerated. So it could actually, I think, put a little bit of strain on that space for you. But if this is just about beautifying the space, I say do it. On the 12th, we've got this new moon partial solar eclipse at 20 degrees of cancer. So for you, this is lighting up that second house that I've been talking about where you can see your money get different, right? You have a talent, you have something like that, you have a skill, you have your available, right? You just keep showing up because somebody's got to show up. Everybody can't be off, right? You keep showing up and getting the job done. And this begins to not only benefit your self-esteem, your value, your value with maybe your company or whatever you're doing. It's like people can see your value, but it also touches your money as well. Now on the 22nd, the sun goes into Leo. On the 26th, Mercury takes this retrograde all the way until August 19th in Leo as well. So now you're going to be, the sun is here, it's lighting it up and wherever the sun goes you want to be seen you want to be heard attention and vitality are called here and mercury is also retrograde right here too so there is a conversation that needs to be had there is a, something you need to voice there is a skill there is maybe even i cannot get off of with you guys gemini something in your head that still needs to be reviewed if you hit your head if you um, have had um, a mental pattern that has been off from what your norm is something here may need to be adjusted or revisited okay then as we get to the 27th of the month, we have a full moon lunar eclipse happening in Aquarius. And this again lights up your ninth house with that Mars retrograde. So remember the Mars energy says, boop, 
pump your brakes. We're kind of in a stall. We're in a slowdown. We're not pushing anything forward. We've got this lunar eclipse saying something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So you've got some change in your faith coming up, right? And faith has nothing to do with what you believe. It has to do with what your actions are. And the action planet Mars has said, hey, I need you to review what your actions are to get us from point A to point B. So this is definitely be a revision time for sure for you, Gemini. So keep me posted. Let me know what comes up for you as you move through July. I look forward to supporting you in any way I can. If you need a reading, you need a chart, you need any of that good stuff, come to me at stormygrace.com, okay? I love you guys and I will see you throughout the month.